Hi everyone, it's Ben here, and today I'm going to go through with you uh, my top five winter fishing tips. So stay tuned and let's see if we can catch some fish in those cold weathers. Morning everyone. Uh, it's about coming up to seven o'clock in the morning. Um, it's not even got a light outside yet, it's still quite dark. Uh, I've just woken up, had a shower, um, having my morning coffee. I'm gonna go into the garage, get my gear ready. And today I'm going out to fishing to Icatelby Lakes uh, and I'm gonna go through my top five winter fishing tips. The temperature this week has actually got a lot warmer um, it's about 13, 14 degrees today, uh, at least forecast. Um, so a lot of these fishing chips, although they don't fully apply today, um, they're still useful and make fishing a lot more comfortable and a lot more effective. So uh, I'll run you through them today and hopefully we'll see if we can catch some fish as well while we're at it. Morning everyone. So my first top tip, um, I'm gonna put forward is the first one you'll come to in the day, uh, and that's to wear appropriate clothing. So it's getting it cold out there, very cold. Depending on what day you go fishing, um, it can be as low as uh, sort of four degrees, three degrees. If it's any lower than that, I wouldn't recommend going fishing. Uh, you, you start to run into problems with surface temperatures getting too cold and the lakes can actually freeze over and that sort of issue. Uh, so you won't be able to get your line into the water um, and it can cause lots of different problems that will hinder your fishing, uh, whatever tactic you're using. So uh, unless you're ice fishing, which uh, is something that some people do in extreme countries, but I've heard of people doing it in the north of UK, I would recommend you wear appropriate clothing. Um, I'll run you through what I'm going to be wearing today. Um, and that's my standard sort of go-to winter fishing sort of uniform, uh, if you want to call it that. Um, so yeah, I'll run you through that uh, and then we'll talk about what, why I'm wearing what I am. So here you can see I've got my thermal uh, layer. So this is uh, top and bottoms tucked into each other and I've got a pair of socks, but I'm also going to be wearing two other pairs of socks to keep my feet nice and warm. You can see I've got my lucky t-shirt on here um, and I've got a pair of jeans and I've got it all tucked in um, to keep the temperature in. Uh, I've got my jumper here, this is my first jumper, this is going to just be an extra core layer. Um, and here you can see I've actually got my socks on now, all three pairs. Uh, keep those toes nice and toasty. Uh, keep it tucked in as well. It's all about tucking and over tucking to keep the temperature in. So here's my jumper number two, um, and then my coat number one. And this is all about keeping core temperature in. And I've got a second coat. Now this second coat, I'm not going to wear off the bat but if uh, things get a bit rough out there, I'll wear it. Um, and then here you can see I've got my accessories. I've got a nice hat to keep my ears nice and toasty. I've got a, a neck warmer, but you could also have a scarf if that's what you want to use. I'm zipping up the core, just uh, zipping up my uh, coat to keep the temperature locked in, uh, pretty much sealing up any ways the temperature can leak out of my core. Um, and then I've also got these brilliant uh, gloves. Now these are fingerless gloves, but they also have like a mitten functionality. So you can pull that over the top and it becomes a mitten, but then you can open it up and it gives me full uh, accessibility to reel and do fishing things. So it's brilliant. So yeah, I'm wearing all that because I want to keep all of my heat in. I don't want any leaks of heat, try and contain any, any heat, uh, cover my hands and my feet, make sure there's no heat leaking out of there. Uh, and keep all the temperature in nice and comfortable while fishing because that's the most important thing. If you can keep comfortable in the cold winter fishing sessions and stay active, proactively fishing, uh, constantly thinking about new techniques, where to fish, you'll, you'll have the highest chance of catching fish. Tip number two, um, and both of these are ones that I'm doing from home because they're sort of the early stage ones, uh, and that's prep. So I'm in my garage right now. Uh, I'm just prepping up stuff quickly this morning. Uh, it doesn't have to be a lot of prep, although I would recommend buying things in advance. Uh, make sure you know what you sort of want to do that week before and 
ordering or going out and buying. Uh, I'm, it's currently locked down for us here at uh, this current time. So I've ordered a lot of the stuff I'm going to be using in. Um, and some uh, angling shops will do click and collect and that sort of thing. And anyway, just make sure you've got all the stuff, all the equipment in your big bags or whatever you're taking with you. Uh, a nice seat to sit down and stay comfortable. Your rods, your reels, just your main gear um, that will help you through the day. And just make sure you've got everything you need. Don't forget your slime rag because fish are slimy. You want to be able to wipe your hands and get that slime off because it can be quite disgusting sitting there covered in slime. Um, so yeah, uh, make sure you prepare before you go. Uh, and it'll make the world a difference have, knowing where everything is uh, so that when you get there you can get onto your spot set up very quickly very efficiently get your lines in the water and increase that chance of the fish instead of faffing around on the back river bank or lake bank looking for the gear you want the gear you need uh, and it'll waste time and that's valuable time when you could be catching fish So I'm just on my way to Ikeelby Lakes. So tip number three is always check out the body of water you're fishing. Uh, in the winter when it's tough and it's cold, you want to be going out proactively and looking for the fish. Any signs of fish is something you want to be keeping an eye out for, be that bubbling up surface, which could mean a, a shoal of fish on the bottom, disturbing the bottom and feeding on the bottom. So that'd be stuff like bream, carp, and tench do that sort of thing. Uh, but other species can do it too. Uh, you want to be looking for fish surfacing, be that uh, roach and rud skimming on the surface, which you do see quite a lot. Um, and then also you want to be looking out for carp. If you can see a carp splashing, well that's something you really want to home in on. Get your rod set up around that area, because it may just mean the carp are there. And if the carp are there, and you're after carp, you want to be there. on this swim the reason being I've seen a lot of water uh, disturption in the middle fish splashing on the surface and even a few bubbles here and there so I'm going to cast a, uh, a nice carp method feeder rig maybe even for a larger bream and tench out into the middle and then there's also this shallow, shallow gully here that I just have a really good feeling about for the warmer temperatures this week I have a feeling that some of the fish will move into the more shallow waters to feed on food that they wouldn't have had access for in that much colder weather. Um, and I, I, I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna set up a float rod, pay most of my attention to that, an alarm and bait drop the feeder rod that I'm gonna have out there. So yeah, that's my plan. And it's a lovely spot, lots of water to fish, um, and if worse comes to worse, we're not doing very well, we'll just move around and find somewhere else. But yeah, I think I've got the lake pretty much to myself. I saw one of the fishermen down that end of the lake. But other than that, all of this water is mine for now. Um, if this stop doesn't do very well, I've seen a spot around there. A lot of the current and wind seems to be bringing the water that way sort of that way towards that end of the lake. So if worse comes to worse, I'll move over there, set up there and see if I can catch any fish following the food down to that end of the lake. And yeah, that brings me to my tip number four. With winter fishing, you've got to be adaptable. Be that different methods of fishing, so feeder fishing, float fishing, carp fishing, whatever's working at the time. Uh, I pack all three, so I'm, I'm good to sort of set up and fish all three of those methods uh, when I'm out fishing. Um, even if you have to resort to freelining it, 
Um, there's nothing wrong with that. If, if it works on the day, it works. That was a carp that just surfaced there. That was a big carp that just surfaced there. So uh, yeah, be adaptable um, and don't be scared to move. If things aren't going well in your favor, pack your stuff up and just move around to a different spot. Uh, always keep an eye out for signs of fish, even not in your spot. So if there's empty swims elsewhere on the lake and you can see fish showing around those swims, move to them. Don't be ashamed of that. You're being adaptable, um, proactive as well. So there's nothing wrong with that. And that's my fourth tip for winter fishing. So I'm going to quickly run you through my rigs. So on this rod here, I've got, this is my little float rod. I've got a nice loaded waggler float with two BBs and one, two, three, four, five, number six shots going down the line. And all that does is when the uh, float hits the water, the weight on the line makes sure that there's a nice natural sink to the maggots. If you don't have those sort of weights on the line because of the way that uh, fishing line's made, it will give it some dodgy like floating action, which fish can grow wise to in fisheries, especially a sort of heavily commercialized fishery. Um, so that's my float setup. Uh, only shallow because I've just plumbed the depth and it's very shallow there. Uh, I think I was fishing too deep last time I came fishing in this spot. And on this rod, this is my carp slash bigger fish rod. So I've got this uh, method feeder here. It's only an NGT one. I don't use too expensive method feeders, but I might improve in the future. I've got two shot. Uh, these are just sort of guide shots. So what happens is when the fish takes, the method feeder will slide to the furthest shot. So I'm going to have it set up like this. Uh, no, sorry about that. Um, and as the fish takes, this will slide to that shot. That's the stopper, and then I'll get my bait spectrum. Just gives the fish less of a hard hit when they start feeling the weight. Carp can drop their bait if they feel too much weight at once. So it's just sort of a sliding rig, so that it's sort of more of a natural take. The fish might not freak out as much. It gives me more time to strike into that fish and hook it. And now I've got a hair rig, um, not too long of a hook length. Um, but yeah, hair rig, and I'm going to be putting some uh, small meat on here, so some circular meat. Uh, I've got some bacon grill, but we'll go over baits in a minute. So yeah, uh, time to bait up and get fishing. So we're getting to tip number five now. Uh, I was just talking about bait. Uh, and with bait in the winter, I, when coarse fishing, go for protein rich, fatty baits. So that's sort of your. Uh, your maggots. So I've got some old pinkies here that I have from last session. There's still a lot of them are still alive and wriggling. Um, some of them are starting to turn into uh, casters, but uh, it's, they've, they've been kept in the fridge. So they're nice and cool and uh, it sort of slows the process. So I've got some nice wriggling pinkies. Um, fish love live bait at any time of the year. I've heard people say that dead bait can be better, so dead maggots that are frozen, but it's, it's sort of far and in between, do what works for you. Um, but the idea of that is it's small baits, it's not going to overfeed the fish, so uh, the maggots are a small bait. And then, because it's a bit warmer today, I'm going to be trying to go for some bigger fish, and for that I've got bacon grill. Uh, so yeah, uh, lunch and meat works, and I have used lunch and meat in the past to great success but bacon grills are bait that I found recently and it just seems to have a much more oily uh, sort of content to it uh, and a lot, much stronger like, smoky smell to it so I think that's uh, that helps with carp perception especially carp um, but yeah I chop it into small chunks and uh, put it on the hair rig launch it out if it's really cold 
go single, so you want just your hook bait out there, maybe PVA bag it, so there's a little bit of ground bait around your hook bait. Um, but if it's warmer like it is today, it's about uh, 12 degrees now, I'll take a temperature reading in a minute. Um, I'm gonna have uh, the method feeder and I'm gonna constantly ground bait it, cast out, if I'm not getting any, but look, after about half an hour, bring it in, check, cast out, repeat. Um, so yeah, and then because it's a bit warmer today, it's not as crucial um, because I might possibly run out of bait. I've got some sweet corn just in case things get really, really slow. Uh, but yeah, ground bait I've got. Uh, the idea of that is to launch quite a bit of it down at my float and get whatever fish feeding in that shallow patch there. But it's also for the method feeder. Get it around that method feeder. I'm not gonna be turning too much out there just on my method feeder and launching it out there uh, where I saw that carp surface a minute ago. So yeah, that's tip number five. Nice protein rich or fatty baits the fish will hover in on and nothing too big when it's really cold. Uh, it didn't take long for me to break the blank. A tiny little bream skimmer. That was just on a pair of maggots out in the shallows. Get them back. Happy with that. At least I've saved the blank, if anything. Off it goes. Didn't take long to get onto the next species. Ooh. That is a little rud. Now you can tell it's a rud because if you look at the mouth, it's upturned. And that's because rud are surface feeders. So they go along the surface most of the time. Uh, and if you see splashing little fish, it tends to be rud on the surface feeding. So yeah, a little rud, and that's the first for the channel, I think. Let's get him back in and see if we can get some more. Third species of the day, lovely roach, and there you go. You can see a difference now between the, that rud and the roach. That sort of downturned mouth, it's not sort of pointed up if it'll close his mouth. Yeah, there you go. So that's for bottom feeding, going on the bottom and picking up bits of food and whatnot. So yeah, getting back in the lake and uh, see if we can catch anything else. Another roach. It's just started to rain, uh, and rain can be a brilliant, brilliant environmental tool in fishing. Uh, if you plan your sessions around rain, depending on what sort of uh, weather front you've got coming in, it can be brilliant. So it can either bring cold water on a hot summer's day, which can get the fish feeding. You can either bring in warm water on a cold winter's day, which is what this is. It's sort of a warmer uh, atmospheric temperature. So this rain is going to be warmer, it might warm up the water and get the fish feeding a bit more. Um, so always keeping them in mind, the weather, because the weather can change the fishing situation like that. So just keep an eye on the weather, uh, plan your sessions. I did. I was aware that it was going to rain, I just didn't know it was going to rain this early. This is brilliant. So far so good, we've had a couple of fish, let's see if we can get something bigger or something different. Another one. So, a bit of a better fish, a nice little skimmer. That was just in the reeds with my float rod. Very good little skimmer. Oh, I'm very happy with that. Uh, hopefully, we can get some bigger fish. Get it back. Um, God, these ducks are so loud. Uh, hopefully, we can get some bigger fish. Um, I had one tap on my lunch and meat method feeder. Um, and I've just launched it back out with a bit more ground bait on. And yeah, I'm just float fishing down here and keeping it fed. And I'm hoping that like that little skimmer dream, well, I can hopefully bring in some bigger fish into this sort of shallow pool here. Well, hopefully this rod does some slow work on the bigger fish. But yeah, it's uh, so far so good. I've been here, what, a couple of hours and I've already caught about eight fish, so. I'm, I'm very happy with this, it's, it's a lot warmer and I think that's really helping the session. Well, the shallow water wasn't paying off. So, luckily, I decided to move my float into deeper water and it paid off. Look at that, that's about a pound. Lovely skimmer. Fish are getting bigger, which is good. So I'm gonna fish the deeper water now with my float see if I can get some bigger bream. 
uh, or any other fish that might be shoaling with them. Uh, hopefully some carp as well. I've also had another run on my lunch and meat, but to no avail. Keep striking a bit late, so I might change the uh, the angle of the rods so that it's a bit more sensitive for the bites. But yeah, cracking fish. Get this, get this fish back. Okay. <laughs> Well, I've definitely hit a shoulder bream. There's another one, literally moments after the, the last fish, so. And another one. Last cast, that was just after the last one as well. I'm gonna retain a couple of them in the net and show you how many I catch in a row. Uh, obviously, if I have a, like a, a few moments of no catching, I'll get them back in and I'll show you, but see how many I can get and show you on camera. Another one. Yeah, I've definitely hit a shoulder bream, which is perfect for the fishing. Match fisherman's dream. If you can bag 50, 40 odd bream of any size, it's going to add some proper weight to your to your net. Another nice one. Well, with all the bream coming in. I wasn't expecting this, but it must mean I'm on the bottom because I just caught a uh, fourth species. Yeah, uh, a lovely size gudgeon. Absolutely stunning little fish. Mini barbel in my eyes. But yeah, these are small little bottom feeders. They don't get too much bigger than this. Absolutely gorgeous little fish with the, the sort of purple iridescence on the side and spots. So yeah, that was unexpected. Took uh, four four maggots as well. But uh, yeah, that will take it on the species hunt. Right, I'll just show you what I've got in my land today. This is just 15 minutes of fishing in that one spot. Look at that. Plonking bream, a roach or two, and then the gudgeon. species of the session. Look at that, cracking, perching mini, showing off his dorsal fin. Perfect little predators. Get him back in, another bream. This one's got very black, black tipped fins. Right. I had a knock on the cup rod a minute ago. Only a quick knock though. Almost like a tap. And if it was a roach tugging at the lunch of meat, or maybe even a bream that maybe can't get it in its mouth. But all we can do is wait on and see if something actually does a proper run with it. But uh, if there's fish coming in to feed on my meat area, it only really bodes well for the carp fishing. Because that'll bring the carp in if there's a fish feeding on sort of meaty, proper baits. They're very pretty fish. And you get these, they make their ways into fishing lakes, but you get these in most rivers and streams, although they are becoming more and more of a scarcity with lower and water contingents. But yeah, beautiful little fish. And off you go. Another roach. Look at that. Another little good gin. Stunning fish. That's been a bit quiet. But uh, I just broke the silence of a lovely rod. There's the, the upturned mouth. And the fins are a bit red, like the roach, but uh, not as much so. More of a gold tinge to the, the body, although they're not so evident in this one. Right, get it back. Fish is 
it's been quite slow for the past couple of well, hour or so. But I kept at it, kept feeding, kept my bait in the water out there, and it paid off <sighs> another cracking little skimmer. It's about a pound and a half, I'd say. Somewhere between a pound and a pound and a half. A lovely fish in these sort of weather temperatures and whatnot. I'll definitely take that. Right, get her back and uh, chuffed with that. Get her back and uh, continue on. I'm hoping that with the evening coming, the sun's sort of uh, lowering in the sky. Uh, some of the bigger fish will come on to feed. That's the that's the that's the hope. Can't always get what you want. Well, without a doubt, just caught the biggest fish of the session so far. Absolute cracking, cracking fish, and it is stunning. Look at that. Now that's what you call a perch. Now this, you can see the humpback, is a very, very big perch. This is about two pounds, two and a half pounds, and for a, for a carp fishing mate, that's not bad at all. And yeah, look at that. Mm, massive mouth that they use for walloping prey, be that little maggots like what I just caught it on, or a, a fish, because they, they will hunt fish like roach and rudd and skimmers like that. But yeah, look at, the, look at the stripes. Awesome fish. Look at that. Getting back. I'm gonna slowly release him. This done. <sighs> Another little skimmer. Fishing's gone a bit slow. The sun's starting to set now properly. Um, however, I'm starting to get some bubbles on the right hand side, right around my quite a lot of bubbles all around my method feed with the meat. I did have a, a run on it, and it was a tiny little bream that Leddy somehow hooked itself on the hook. Um, so it wasn't anything special. But most of my breed today have been from the float. Everything but that one bream have been from the float with the maggot. Although the maggots seem to have, the fish feeding on the maggots seem to have just stopped. But there's a hell of a lot of bubbling over there. But that's not going to stop me having both rods in the water, even if they have stopped feeding on the maggots. Yeah, I'll see if I can show you the bubbling. There. See those bubbles coming up in the middle of the camera? That is definitely either one or two or even a small shoal of fish. Bream, carp, tench, could be anything. Going along the bottom, stone, but there you go. It's properly bubbling up now. And that's near enough where my bait is and where I've been baiting up all the meat. I chucked a lot of ground bait in there earlier, so I might bring the bottom, put all the bottom feeders in, but I'm hoping there's a carp down there or something big to take her up uh, me. starting to get really low now in about I'd say half an hour 40 minutes I'll probably have to start packing up um, but yeah it's been an amazing session we've caught so far if we don't catch any more going forward we've caught five species we caught rudd, roach, perch, gudgeon and bream uh, the perch was the biggest 
although we had a couple of uh, really nice skimmer bream that were sort of ranging up to, to the pound mark. That perch was probably about two pound-ish. Um, and yeah, it's been an amazing session. It's been really nice just to get out uh, and sit surrounded by nature. I've seen loads of wildlife like uh, moorhens, kingfishers, cormorants uh, all over the place. So it's been nice to sort of get around, uh, get surrounded by nature out and about. Um, I've actually caught the sun, I don't know if you can tell, got a bit of the red face going. Um, but yeah, it's been brilliant. Um, and yeah, it's been t top five winter fishing tips, as well as like a mini species hunt, late late winter species hunt. So yeah, uh, I hope you all enjoyed. Uh, feel free to like and subscribe and uh, hit the bell icon. And uh, catch us in the next episode of Nature Scope. Bye.